Great. Thank you very much for coming in. Good evening, everyone. This uh, special session on operational resilience. So I have some slides. I'll go with the slides. Um, in between, if you have any questions, you can stop me anytime. Or otherwise, intention is to have at least 10 minutes at the end to have that interaction in the way of question answers. Quickly about myself, uh, 35 years in the industry, 16 years in what we now call a resilience domain. Before that, it used to be BCM, so I would know BCM, organizational resilience, operational resilience, crisis management, risk management, that's all that I know. I have won awards nationally and globally, multiple awards. I've written two books. First one was co-authored with Dhiraj Lal about NCMA 7000, which is the BCM standard for UAE. And the second one uh, released last November, my experience with BCM, my experiences, my experiences with BCM. I'm writing third and fourth also. Third one should be out on 20th of May. That's the plan. But fourth one for sure, my experiences or experiments with organizational resilience. Date is fixed 11th of November this year. There's a lot to learn from each other. That's what I believe. And I'm a lifelong learner myself. International certified international and corporate trainer touching 10,000 plus hours in teaching training. Fellow of BCI and fellow of BCS as well. I'm IEEE ambassador. So mix of experiences, trainer, consultant, auditor, assessor, executioner, I have dirtied my hands myself, author, mentor, and a speaker. So, so we'll start with this question, what is operational resilience? And I would like to begin with a video from internet. I need to unshare for a minute, for not minute, for a few seconds only. I hope you can see my screen again. Someone say yes, no, please. We can see operational resilience uh, Phil, with the white screen. Too big to fail? Do you see my... Too big to fail concept, that is the white screen. And do you see the explorer? Not now? the video. Not the video. No, not the video. You I don't think you have shared only the PPT. Maybe that is why. If you share the screen, I then both screen. will be taken. I attempted to do that. Let me do once again. Maybe it's a new version of. A zoom, only one more attempt, and I believe it should work now. What do you see? Uh, yes, too big to fail. My ex uh, right? Uh, the web browser, web page. the entire screen we can browser, see. Browser, right? And now the slide. Correct. Watch the video. You see my. Browser again, Explorer? Yes. Great, yes. great. And there will be one more test whether audio, video, both are clear. Watch it carefully. There's going to be a question based on that. Audio, video clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Great. Here we go. Too big to fail refers to the notion that a business has become so large and ingrained in a nation's economy that its failure would have catastrophic economic repercussions. When a government bails out a company that's too big to fail, it intervenes and provides the company with help to survive. The term goes back decades, but it was prominent during the 2007-2008 financial crisis, when the U.S. government bailed out certain companies and financial institutions that were deemed too big to fail. If a large company does fail, the companies that rely on it for their business may collapse as well. 
costing employees their jobs and leading to a cascade of negative effects that can hurt an economy. Governments weigh the cost of a bailout versus the cost of a company failing, and bailouts are sometimes the most cost-effective solution. While bailouts can avert an economic collapse, there are opponents who argue they might lead to unnecessary risk-taking, and that no company should be allowed to become too big to fail. Or in the event such a large company does start to go under, the government should not intervene. I hope you can see my slide once again. So the question is, someone say yes, no, please. Yes, yes. Question for yes. all of you. What do we understand from this too big to fail? Well, I would like to say before you answer, we had been using another phrase, it's too good to believe. So what does too big to fail? Anyone, you can unmute and you can speak. Nothing is too big to fail. Nothing some is too big to fail. Some are systematically important, so you will not allow failure, but you have to plan for it. Good. Too good to believe. It's so good that it's difficult to believe it, right? So too big to fail is so big that it cannot fail. We might have thought so, but that's not right. All big organizations, all small organizations, can fail. And they have been failures also, we know that as well. So this is the principle that anyone, anyone can fail. And the concept that when I have become too big, there are too many dependencies on me. So attempt should be that I don't fail. And in which case, sometimes the expectations are that government should be allowed. They have been cases in the world, in different countries, they have been cases when the government helped also. And for that reason, they have been some reactions or opposition also. Why should the government bail me out? It's my, me, my company, right? Okay. But because of dependencies, because of dependencies, which are huge, when the company is huge, expectation is that we do not fail. And that is the principle behind implementing operational resilience in all organizations. Quickly looking at the definitions then. First one is from BCBS, Basel Committee for Banking Supervision, in short, BCBS. And this is very simple and that's the reason I picked up, I like it. Operational resilience is the ability of a bank to deliver critical operations through disruptions. And an impression may get developed, so this is BCM, I don't mind. If anyone gets that impressions, I do not mind. All that I'll say is very simple. To start with, this is good and very good according to me. Replace the bank with a, a bank with an organization. And this definition is valid for all organizations. So I'll say operational resilience, the concept is valid for all organizations, whatever may be the size whatever may be the nature, whatever may be the geography, country, and whatever may be the complexity, whatever may be the industry sector of the organization. Second definition, which is a bit longer, I pick up from Gartner. Operational resilience, as defined by Gartner, is initiatives that expand business quantity. So if you were getting that impression from BCPS definition, we were right. Expand business quantity management programs to focus on the impacts, mm. risk appetite, and tolerance levels for disruption of products or service delivery to internal and external stakeholders. We also know that the stakeholder is an old term. What we use these days is called interested parties. We start getting the flavor of BCM. So operational residence and BCM are close. We also get a flavor of risk appetite. So risk management and operational resilience are close. I'm an auditor also, and having gone across companies and countries, based on my experiences, I claim, even if the journey has been 10 or 15 years of certified journey, a weak point is this interested parties portion, 
along with that the context portion i'll go up and extend that perhaps perhaps no one will pass on these conditions even if they have been 10 15 years of certified journeys third definition i'm picking up is from productivity operational resilience is an organization's ability to detect prevent respond to recover and learn from operational disruptions that may impact delivery of important business and economic functions or underlying business services so we get a flavor of bcm here also we get a flavor of learning lessons learned or continual improvement from this definition we also get delivery of important business services which perhaps we used to call critical mission critical or prioritized in latest times in the same journey we have been using the term called prioritized processes or activities a uh, new term in operational resilience world would be important business services rather than critical or prioritized once again from bcbs this sentence is very important operational resilience is an outcome that benefits from the effective management of operational risk so very clear that uh, risk is linked with operational resilience if we manage our risks better effectively we will be resilient operationally so the moment we say the way is through managing risks effectively and we were saying operational risks so let's look at some examples and cases of operational risks and first the definition of operational risk or operational risk management orm in short is a continual cyclic process which includes risk management risk decision making and implementation of risk controls which results in acceptance mitigation or awareness of risk so simple i would say risk management as we understand in simplest terms would have three steps identify evaluate and mitigate but the moment we start growing making it complex and more effective the moment we start moving to towards risk management system having a system for risk management we will see it's also a continuous journey there has to be monitoring review and continuous improvement are in our risk management approach as well and this i have picked up from wikipedia some examples of operational risks and i have shown the source at the bottom cyber attack which has been happening more in last two years of covid 19 pandemic period no one is immune to this human error we all can make a mistake and that will be a risk operational risk regulations are not risks but if i fail to comply with a regulation that could become a risk for me outsourcing is good there are benefits of outsourcing but then there are some risks or negative sides of outsourcing also one of them being that i lose control my dependency on the vendor increases that becomes a risk for me talent retention for many organizations for any organization i believe and once again in last two years that the big drain became a buzzword big resignation became a big uh, buzzword a lot of dependency on it i believe all organizations are highly dependent i can't think of any organization today that can work without it so if it fails due to any reason that becomes a risk or operational risk a lot of data is being created collected by the organizations and they start using this for the benefit they, they need to target the customers they need to create new products so focusing and targeting products at the users if that data get corrupted data gets lost then that becomes a risk to our operations cyber fraud similar to attack perhaps one could say yeah. i have had clients who would say the man finish this bcm implementation that you have started as soon as possible as soon as possible because we change the moment management changes maybe they will lose focus on bcm because we change so fast every year there is a big change in the management so change is the only constant change is good but there could be negative side 
effects of the changes in organizational structures, etc. So that becomes a risk for someone. Processes, my once again, experience having been across companies, countries. In the beginning of BCM implementation, I would say, especially when we are starting the business impact analysis step, that the first step is please come to the training. I'm training you on BIA. Please come with the list of processes. Yes. Processes. The one we don't have processes. We don't know our processes. Right? It's here. So that is a risk in itself, not having a documented process. If people show, then I see that the process is too old. Over the period, we have refined our way of working, but we have not updated the document. So I know how to do it. But if I move out, the other person may not because he or she will pick up the documented process, which is not up to date. That's out of sync. That becomes a risk. Looking at these, and these are only few I'm saying, not a comprehensive list. No one can have a full list, by the way. We may get a flavor feeling that then nothing is left. These are covering all different types of risks, which is good. I'm happy with that feeling also. To me, it's a risk. Different names given, operational risks. People have been asking me a question. Daman, what type of risks would be covered in BCM journey? All types of risks are covered to me. I know organizations, either on their own or out of compulsion, regulatory compulsion, may have operational risks department also separately, especially in the BFSI sector. So I'm picking up an exercise. First one, please do participate. I'm going to be asking a question. Case given is Alec is a life insurance company where a person called John works as a data entry operator. While creating a new application record, he entered applicants per month salary as 1,000, 1,000, 1 million instead of 100,000 as the applicant had filled in the form. Please tell me what are the implications of this situation. And I am happy to switch off my screen so that we all come in front of each other. Switch on your cameras if you wish. Anyone can answer this question. Whoever wants to answer. Switch on the cameras, please. Well, John will be very happy. Okay, that's Salish. Anyone else? Anyone else? John will be very happy. It seems everyone agrees to that. Good. It will impact organization overall financial planning for that month if uh, wrong data is entered and it's being basically proce processed. Okay. Good. Life insurance business happens like this, that if I am the applicant, you are the company, the insurance that I ask for is not guaranteed to me. You have the company has the right to say no to me. So you will look at first my requirement, what I'm asking for, then my physical conditions means my health and also my financial condition, whether I'm capable of paying that much premium or not and you have the right to say no. In this case, what happens is that because my income has been entered as 1,000, 1,000 uh, policy where you might have said no, you might have liked to say no, such policy may get issued. And again, as uh, I, sorry, I didn't see the name, um, that there may be financial implications to the company. Company may realize it, and may say, sorry, Daman, this is issued in, in mistake and Daman will not be happy anymore and there will be conflicts. It's not my mistake you issued to me. You know, live to, you need to live to this contract. And by the way, if you realize this in two, three, five, ten days and Daman dies, maybe the claim would also be submitted by the family and that may be a bigger challenge if you say no to family now after realizing. So it's serious. It can be a serious matter. Mistake, human error, by mistake has been an oh was it by mistake john we need to see whether the man paid you some money to enter thousand thousand operational risk 
Second case coming up. Christina is working with Alec. She's involved in a financial fraud. You know this. So you are also in the same company, Alec. You know this, but you do not report or escalate. Why not? Again, I'm going off so that we see each other, switch on the cameras, anyone can respond. You and Krishna are colleagues in the same company. Krishna is involved in a financial fraud. You know this, but you don't speak, you don't escalate, you don't report. Why not? Anyone? You are not sure whether it is your problem. So why complicate? It's a company's problem. And None that's of a my business. Perception used. None of my business. I'm not bothered. Okay. It's not impacting me. Incorrect assumption. That's the first uh, reaction that we have seen everywhere. Okay, Samir, thanks. Anyone else? Any other views? If if we may comment, uh, then it may happen. You know, a uh, wrong message is conveyed. It is better, it is handled by the correct parties in the organization rather than creating any kind of a rumor. So I think so. That is okay. my uh, view. Thanks, Anita. But how will the right people, the right set of people handle it? You know it and you have not told them. That's the case. <laughs> Anyone else? You can type in the chat box also if you're not comfortable speaking or switching on the camera. I'll monitor the chat box also. Few more. Maybe seconds. I'm also involved along with uh, the. I game. like that. Thank you very much, Shalish. Shalish, yeah. Thank you. There could be few other reasons that the 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 person the person called Katrina is my boss, so I'm not comfortable. Right. There could be social drivers. Uh, the affinity factor between the two staff employees. Okay, good. Thanks, Kush. Kasina may be a good friend, and I may be worried, I may be scared that she may lose job. It's possible these days financial fraud, even if not thrown out of the company, but there are some implications to her, and I may lose a good friend. That may also be a possible reason that I don't speak up, even if I no. Great. Next question quickly. Is this an operational risk according to you? Christina yes. may be having good connect with the top bosses. Christina may be having a very good connect. network. <laughs> and who is that? I know that but I will not enter in. And who is that? Pradeep here. Pradeep, thank you very much. Yes, that's also a possible risk. And a possible reason, and this is an operational risk. Next one, and this is a true story from my own old previous organization. We had an incident logging tool. Once we checked and found that there were no entries in that. That's all. Tell me, please, what is your interpretation of this situation? Maybe somebody has uh, purposely uh, deleted this. Uh, this could be uh, very well planned, okay. or it could have uh, been deleted uh, as a human error, erroneously. Okay. Both could be okay. Chances. Anyone else? Failure of management controls. What control has failed here, Kush? Obviously, when you are having an incident management tool and some incident happens. You need to be, somebody needs to be recording it, right? As a role and responsibility, and somebody needs to be overlooking, and somebody must have taken some decision in that record, in that incident. So obviously, the management has to have some role in the incident management. Good, thank you very much. So I was new to this organization when I joined Global BC Manager as Global BC Manager. I was part of the board also. We used to meet as board once in a month. So it was third month when this point came up that we had an incident management tool. I said, but this is third meeting I'm attending. We have not discussed this. So what's happening with respect to incidents in our company? And people were looking around, which told us that there was no owner for this. 
I said, with your permission, board, I would like to look onto this. I will attempt to then own this process. Board was very happy, obviously. Right? Someone is speaking himself, he would own something. Great. Thank you very much. That's when we looked into it. I looked into it and I found there were zero incidents in the tool. So next meeting, I reported this and 30 people were clapping. Great. I said, hold on, please. And this is where I was looking at your interpretation of the situation. So someone said, could have been deleted by mistake. Someone said, could have been deleted knowingly. Right? Possible. And that's why it becomes operational risk. My interpretation to the board was like this. That a calm sea is not necessarily a good sign. It was zero recorded or reported, not zero happened. This is how we should take as a board. And they have taken three cases because we have only one hour today. Going a bit fast also. But whenever we have identified a risk, that's a good step, good job, but the job doesn't end there. We need to be managing, managing it also. So why people were not logging in? If we take this case, another minute on this, and this is what I told. My belief is it has not been recorded, deleted, either by mistake or knowingly. It is not recorded, actually. We could trace, right? It was never updated. The database was never updated. Okay. Which means people do not have faith in the process. They don't believe us, the board, their management. We need to create that rapport with them. We need to create that faith in them. We need to develop this culture in the organization. This is how we will be then managing the risk that we have identified. So coming back to the topic operational risk, we discussed some operational risks because we understood the way is by managing risks effectively. Why should we do a big question? Always big. Why? Why should we do this? Any management will ask this question. Any CEO, CF, or board will because nothing comes free in this world. So, the one please tell us why. The big why. I'm saying these are the drivers, regulatory requirements, corporate governance, implications of non compliance, gains through compliance, operational excellence to organizational resilience. I'll pick up these one by one quickly. Some, some I'm saying, there may be more than this. Bank of England last year issued operational resilience policy, which is mandatory. That is a regulatory requirement. Only to UK banks, BFSI sector. In UK, just like GDPR, initially we thought GDPR was applicable to EU. Later on, we realized anyone doing anything with EU, GDPR is applicable. Similarly, I believe anyone having any BFSI, BFSI with UK, this Bank of England's operational residence policy is applicable. That's why we should be doing if we are in the BFSI sector and if we have any links with UK. No, I don't have a regulator or my regulator has not asked for operational residence to be implemented. But it's good to be good. We want to do it ourselves because of corporate governance. That becomes a driver for us. It is said, I have not been able to find this proof yet. I returned to Bank of England also. There is no response yet. I'm still attempting to find, but I have been told that the non-compliance to Bank of England's operational resilience policy will fetch penalty to the tune of 250 pounds, pounds, not dollars. And we have been cases where it has already been done. Not for this compliance, but any other regulatory requirement. When the organization couldn't, didn't follow, then to the tune of $243 billion, $180 million, $185 million source available here. Or either I don't have any regulatory requirement or I have been compliant. Then there are gains. That becomes the driver for me because there is gain to do it or by doing it, estimated to the tune of $700 per person per year for big organizations and $2,000 per person per year for small organizations. That 
comes out to be three times 300% return on investment. The time, money, and effort in, invested in being compliant to a regulatory requirement could fetch us returns to the tune of 300% or the way forward, the journey according to me is from risk management to ERM, enterprise risk management, which may be IRM, some, some companies would say integrated risk management to GRC governance risk compliance to BCM, business quantity management. These four generally you would claim the month established for decades, 30, decade, 30 years, two decades, something like that. Operational resilience. So moving from BCM to operational resilience, when I say this, I make this statement, the requirement is operational resilience. It is met. The means is through BCM. Maybe relatively new. And achieve operational excellence and ultimately we will be a resilient organization. Organizational resilience is the end point. When I say end point, I'll still expand this. No one ever can ever be 100% resilient. And also perhaps no one is a zero on resilience as of today. Everyone would have some elements of resilience already. I also wanted to quickly talk about two recent developments in the BFSI sector. And those are Bank of England's operational resilience policy and Central Bank of Ireland's cross-industry guidance on operational resilience. Quickly, I'll give you a glimpse of these two documents, sorry. Can you see the document? Someone say yes, no, please. No. No. Okay. So another test. Do you see my screen slide? Yes. Great. And? Yes. This is Bank of England's. You see PDF document now, right? Yes. So just nine pages. I'll quickly show you the table of content. There are five chapters, that's all. And fourth one is our old friend, the relationship between operational residence and business quantity planning. So based on this, I make this statement once again. The need is operational residence. It's met through BCM. But this is just one document. Actually, they may be, you go deep into Bank of England's requirements, there may be 20 documents. That's why it is, complex. I'm sorry about that. I wanted to show you Bank of Central Bank of Ireland's document also. So we see, you see the PDF once again? Someone say yes, no, please. Yes, yes, we can see it. This is called Cross Industry Guidance on Operational Residence issued by Central Bank of Ireland. I'll show you the table of contents also we see a little more because pages are also more in this but it is much better this single document much better worded easy simple to follow to do also truly speaking i'll go up to an extent of saying that even if your need is to implement according to bank of england's policy my session is start with the central bank of Ireland's guidance document, very easy to follow because it's just one document, much better worded. By this document, these documents, quick look at what is expected from the board. They are supposed to, expected to, required to approve important business services, impact tolerances and a self-assessment report. No CEO, no top management, the board has to approve these. And they also have to review these. So again, not one-time activity. These need to be reviewed, refined, and once again, signed off. They also are expected to possess, this is very important once again, adequate knowledge, skills, and experience for what? to screw up the management, no. So that they are able to provide constructive challenge to senior management, very good point, I would say. 
A quick look at then what is expected from the senior management. We understand the board is top and senior management is next. Whatever. They will be required to, they should, must implement operational residence policy or policies or the program. They must report to the board. And next one is important once again, to take over the board's responsibilities if there is no board. Organization may be small, simple, right? And they may not be a board. Then top management, senior management does the same work that we saw on the previous slide. This is also a good one. Moving from operational risk to operational resilience to business continuity. Quick look at the relationship. What is the relationship between these three elements or programs or frameworks in an organization? Operational risk management is focused on minimizing risk through development of controls that reduce the impact and probability of an operational event. We know. We have been using likelihood more than probability these days. So operational resilience goes beyond this and promotes a deeper understanding of a firm's business and all the steps, activities involved in delivering its critical or important business services. It focuses on building capabilities to deal with. We have been saying this for almost all frameworks and all programs. We need to have capability to do this. When they materialize, rather than purely focusing on building defenses to prevent risk events from occurring. And continuity of critical or important business services is an essential component of being operationally resilient. Although operational resilience is much wider than just continuity and recovery. Operational resilience requires coordination between risk, BCM, incident management, third-party risk management, information. We used to say IT, which is nowadays called ICT, information and communication technology, cyber risk and recovery, and resolution planning. So quick impression is operational resilience is little more, much more than BCM, because there are six other we see coordination between these. The day I touch upon organizational resilience, I say organizational resilience is much more than BCM and six of these. It's about 20 domains or discipline in the organization that need to work in coordination. The organizational resilience, we will talk some other day. Today, the focus is operational resilience. From Central Bank of Ireland, I said it's much better worded, easy also to follow. There's a three pillars approach there. I liked it and I'll spend a few minutes on that. So they say three pillars of operational resilience. First one is called identify and prepare. Second one is called respond and adapt. And the third one is known as recover and learn. Another reason that I say this is better worded to me this is the first guideline that I've seen, which actually has guidelines. We know there are many ISO standards. ISO 31000, for example, is a guideline or guidance document. But there are no guidelines there. The standard is written in clauses, right? This is the first document I'm saying, I have seen, which has the guidelines. And there are 15 divided or distributed in these three pillars quickly. The board has ultimate responsibility. This is first guideline for the operational resilience of a firm. The operational resilience framework should be aligned with the firm's overall governance and risk management framework. So again, the risk management coming into picture. The board reviews and approves the criteria for critical or important business services. Criteria itself, the process to find, to establish important business services needs to be approved by the board. A firm should identify its critical or important business services. Impact tolerances should be approved for each critical or important business service. And we understood in Bank of England's operational resilience policy, this approval has to be done by the board. A firm should develop clear impact tolerance metrics. A firm should understand and map out how its critical or important business services are delivered. So we see, I believe, 
an element of continuity here, business continuity. A firm should capture third party dependencies in mapping of critical or important business services. A firm should have ICT and cyber resilience. So both documents today have little extra focus, I would say, on cyber resilience. The reason we know because of two years of COVID-19 pandemic, the cyber attacks, the risk of cyber attacks or different types. It could be fraud, it could be attack, it could be ransomware attack, etc. has increased. So little more requirement or little more focus on that specifically saying cyber resilience. And guidelines number 10, 10 under first pillar, which is identify and prepare is called a firm should document and test its ability to remain within impact tolerances through severe but plausible scenarios. In BCM journey, we had always said testing was important. If you look at second pillar, which has three guidelines, business quantity management should be fully integrated into the overarching operational resilience framework and links to a firm's risk appetite. The incident management strategy should be fully integrated into the overarching operational resilience framework. Number 13, guideline number 13. Internal and external crisis communication plans should be fully integrated into the overarching operational resilience framework. If you look at the third pillar, which is recover and learn, there are only two guidelines. Number 14 says, a lessons learned exercise should be conducted after disruption to a critical or important business service to enhance a firm's capabilities to adapt and respond to future operations. A momentary pause here. My experience would say, while we all, most of us have been doing this, there is an improvement according to me. We mostly would have stopped at lessons recorded rather than learned. So we need to understand while the guidelines are not giving this explanation, I believe it's more than the recording. We need to implement those changes. We need to discuss. We need to check the effectiveness of those changes. Then only those become lessons learned. The last guideline is a firm should promote an effective culture of learning and continuous improvement as operational resilience evolves. So it's a continuous share and we get improvement in our operational program practices as international may I request the person to go on mute please someone is on road it seems to be please do that international scenario quick look bcbs has issued principles for operational resilience bank of england PRA, Prudential Regulator Authority, which is part of Bank of England, and Financial Conduct Authority in the UK have issued this policy. It's a set of documents, maybe 20 or more documents. European Commission has proposed something called DORA, Digital Operational Resilience Act, not finalized yet, not in operation yet, but is coming up. Central Bank of Ireland's cross-industry guidance on operational resilience that we touched upon, and Federal Reserve Board's sound practices to strengthen operational resilience. So all these appear, mostly appear from the banking sector, BFSI sector, but the principles, principles of operational resilience, the gains or the negative points are valid for all organizations. I said that earlier, I'm repeating. Quick view of business quantity management. Most, I believe, are expert on this, manage, the cycle I'm looking at quickly. Manage program, policy and manual are produced here. Second stage is analyze, or we used to call understanding the organization where two most important activities are conducted, BIA, business impact analysis, and RA risk assessment. Design followed by that, we call designing the strategies or solutions. Once the solutions are ready, then we need to implement through plan or plans, various names. BC, sometimes business recovery is a special different, different plan, different document, incident management, crisis management, emergency management, crisis communication management, ITDR, cybersecurity. We had seen that there was a touch of cyber resilience specifically in both the documents. Followed by once the plans are ready, having plans is good, but those need to be 
tested also validate is the stage in which test review and audit three activities are conducted continual improvement is required we understand pdca cycle plan do check and act cycle of continual improvement that needs to be followed in operational resilience in bcm in any year framework and any other domain that we follow or standard that we follow while i'm showing embedding which happens through training and awareness at the end i do not mean to say that this is the last stage this is just to complete this cycle i'm showing it here truly speaking learning training and awareness embedding happens in all other stages also the day the ceo woke up i had a nightmare tonight we have we must implement bcm the awareness started embedding starts that moment itself quickly showing the complexity of one of the banking processes which by the way is one of the simplest processes in the banking new account opening for you banks internal systems need to be ready website needs to be ready most of the banks today are offering account opening can happen online you don't need to travel walk into the branch printer who will to print your welcome kit paper supplier i think well those boxes are missing here this is supplier not the producer of the paper someone else might have produced it the wood might have come from someone else and perhaps some from some other countries so complexity is increasing in building supplier wherever this bank is housed at least two utility providers the electricity and the water postal department who will post this welcome kit to you plastic card use or atm whether atm card or a debit card along with your new account that you have opened who has produced the card who has produced the material to produce that card the machine the printer dispatcher atm machine if you want to use that card now and think of the atm machine maybe thousand parts manufactured by different companies in different countries assembled by someone then on ships on trucks sent by someone and then installed in your bank but maintained by someone else so many entities involved communication link between this atm machine and the data center that you have for the bank and all the equipments in the data center and once again there will be multiple parts multiple manufacturers someone else may be maintaining these and i'm also saying internal departments of the bank which are legal facilities etc et all need to adjust for your new account opening and this is the reason that there is so much focus on operational resilience in the bfsi sector this is the simple complexity of the simplest process in a bank but the concepts once again are equally important and valid for all other sectors also there was a discussion about mapping a very important requirement in the bank of england's operational resilience policy mapping document has to be created i'm quickly giving you showing you a sample or a template for the mapping document the department for which you are creating this mapping document more than that they may be functions and units head department head with the deputies this is basic bcm along with deputies contact details the name of the process with details how many details how much details as much as you wish as much as you need you need to be using this document so make it useful meaningful for yourself and by the way you create it perhaps after you i will be using it so make it easy for me so make it meaningful please process owner contact details along with the backup process owner then these within bcm these parameters that come out of bia business impact analysis stage those need to be recorded for that particular process this is done for each process then dependency what is the dependency it could be internal or external and a vendor then vendors details and vendor primary as well as secondary person in vendors organization do you have contractual commitments with this vendor what is the date of last contract review or renewal when does bcm assessment conducted have you 
then what was the outcome results? Is when the BCM certified, we know there is a standard called ISO 22. And you may like your vendor to be certified for that. So you are asking that question. A corresponding test done involving a vendor. What is the next review renewal test rate for this vendor with this vendor? And this is where it starts becoming more complex now. Is vendor dependent on another vendor? It may be vendors, vendors, vendors. So the supply chains are long, deep, and complex today. You may not be able to achieve this in first one. By the way, Bank of England's expectation is this 31st of March. You should have all this already. So them, I believe. Even if you show them first level, they should be happy and say this is the plan to move to second, third level vendor. So if they have vendors, sub vendors, sub vendors, then all these steps need to be repeated for those vendors and vendors, vendors. Way forward, according to me, looking at the watch also, my apologies, I have taken a little extra in speaking because I wanted to keep some time for questions as well. Start from risk management, move to enterprise risk management or integrated risk management to governance, risk and compliance. And many hands would go up the month. We already have, this is decades old journey. Good, thank you very much. But no one is perfect in this world. So keep doing this good work and keep improving. Move to business quantity management through which achieve resilience in the operations. Achieve excellence in your operations and ultimately achieve organizational resilience. Be a resilient organization with a repetition that is just a journey of transformation. No one will ever be 100%. Quickly, this is, I've created courses around this. So I'm giving you quick claims of that. This is what I cover in the course. There's a foundation course on Udemy already live. And is a professional level, one full day course, which is also uh, running now. Designed, developed, delivered by yours truly. So all the experience that I have in the world has gone into these courses. We touch what, why, and how of operation resilience in these full day content when it is the professional level. The Udemy course, online course, video based course is two and a half hours. Full, both are full of exercises, highly interactive courses as have been doing all my courses and there's an assessment also. Last question for you. Over these discussions, please do. Not a poll, so you'll have to either say or type in a request, type in the chat box, please. Yes, yes, and I would like to have more information about the courses. You can say no also, no one is perfect. I'll be happy to improve the pattern. Time. Can I have your responses in the chat box, please? I'll wait for a few seconds before that. We do have five minutes. I'll open it for the questions. I believe you all have my contacts also. You can write as well. Any questions around this? I'll be happy to answer. I'm stopping here. Thank you very much for participating. And switch on the cameras, unmute yourselves. I'll also request, I wish to take a photograph, if you don't mind, on the cameras, please. I will be publishing this photograph. I have no objections to that. And you all will become the global I'll wait for a few seconds. Some cameras are coming up. I request all, but it's not mandatory. If you're not comfortable, no challenge at all. Great. One more, great. Okay, so give me the best smiles, please. Best smiles, please. Thank you very much. Uh, here I go. Mohan, I was a bit late. Can you switch on again, please? All right, great. Now, thank you very much. Any questions, please? We do have some, some time, about four minutes. Any suggestions, inputs are also welcome.
no questions coming up. So my offer, please feel free to write to me anytime. Responses are guaranteed. Even if I'm working, I'm working, I'm traveling, whatever I'm doing, I check my mails overnight and responses guaranteed to the best of my capabilities. So, Mohan, um, chap, yes, please. Yeah, just to have some conversation, I think no one yes, is asking. Please. Yes, please. So, so uh, I know I missed uh, some of the earlier part there. Uh, you do discuss about business reason. Can you like to show some other slides which are like uh, you feel throughout the your career people have actually failed on this one or these are the areas of the failures mm -hmm. operational resilience because theory is one correct and practical is one part correct right. when you start right. implementing where rubber meets the road you start having the problem right so, uh, could you highlight based on your experience that hey these are the areas where you actually face the problem okay. everything is all very good looks nice and beautiful but then right. Right. You start, this is what you should look into. Thank, yeah. Thanks, Sharu. Very important question. And I'm repeating. Some of us have been doing some activities for long. But no one is perfect in this world. And also when we become more experienced, we get more challenges. So I've developed a concept called resilience OPD. Just like human beings, the moment I become 40 years old, a recommendation is that every year get a full body scan and full body checkup. You may not realize something wrong may be developing so that doctor, the consultant may be able to look into your reports and may be able to say, right? Similarly, I'm saying, especially the large corporates, especially those have about 10, 15, 20 years of, I will say risk and GRC and BCM journeys. Operational resilience, I'm saying I'm saying relatively new concept. So I'm not talking about that yet. We are going to go on that. Over a period, inconsistencies creep into the systems in our way of working. So I'm saying resilience OPD. I'm the consultant, equivalent of medical consultant. Please come to me with your reports, with your documents. I'll have a quick look and I may be able to see what is don't say lacking what improvements can i propose and i may be like i may like to do some diagnosis also so please tell me a little more maybe get that report also let me have a look let me talk to a few more people in the organization i'm doing some diagnosis based on that i may be able to suggest or recommend some improvements what are those improvements again i'm saying based on my experience i do not know everything in the world I'm a lifelong learner myself, but having gone across companies, countries. So input is not from one company, one country. I'm saying from companies and countries. Some basics are missing. Despite having 10, 15 years of journey and certified journey, this interested parties portion is not done very well. You at the most people show me a list. These are my interested parties. That's good, but that's not good enough. Question is, how did you create it? So where is the process? That process is missing. Then what? You Even if you show me the process, good, but it's not good enough. What are you doing with it? The requirement as mentioned in ISO 22301 is to solicit their needs and expectations. We don't do that. And who is interested party? Just one example quickly, I'm saying people have said, Daman, this was eye opener when I talk about interested parties. Even if we two are the colleagues in an organization, we both are the interested parties. But even our families are interested parties. So I need to know their needs and expectations also. Who is doing? I believe no. And then, so it doesn't stop here. Then I need to make plans to fulfill those expectations of my relevant interested parties. And the final step, when I've taken some actions, I need to go back to them to get this input. So how happy are you? Have I done good, bad, ugly? So if you talk of one interested party, the family that we are talking about, we used to run client satisfaction surveys and employee satis satisfaction surveys. 
it seems to be we need to be running family satisfaction surveys also now with respect to their needs and expectations being met. So that's one. Context of the organization, once again, clause four within ISO 22301, which means the starting point. There is no context of the document, a uh, context of the organization documented. People tell me the stories. Yes, senior management can tell me the story. The requirement is it needs to be documented. And if you have documented, then have people understood this. I am an employee. Charo, you become the CEO. If you do not make me understand, how can I be, will I be living to those expectations that you have? The context of the organization is so important. Third example I'm giving, the processes are missing, whether BIA or RA or anything that we do. People tell me, you know what has happened? I'm saying, repeating, the long journey. Such organizations need this residence OPD more than, because I'm 40 years old, I need to have annual tests more than someone who is 20 years or 30 years old. And by the way, is 57, I'm 57, so I need more than many people. Inconsistencies creep in. What have people been doing? They are maintaining it. Do you have BIA? Yes, I have BIA. Yes, this is the BIA. How do you conduct? No one knows. Someone, either internal consultant or external consultant, had done it. They have moved out. Now people are in the mode of maintaining it rather than doing it. So these are quickly, I'm saying, gaps which we fill in. And this is all this is in line with operational resilience. We'll be better resilient in our operations if we start bridging in these, filling in these gaps. Thank you. I hope it made sense. It does. Thank it you. does. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, in this attempt, actually, we have gone four minutes beyond. So quickly, I'll ask any other questions. Otherwise, with my apologies for overshooting the time. Thank you very much, everyone. Feel free to write to me anytime. A response is guaranteed to the best of my capabilities. Thank you, Raman. Uh, thank you very much. Amor you. Vijaya, that's Rajesh, I believe. Thank you, sir. Uh, any question? Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll keep scheduling such sessions. I'm doing different, uh, I'm doing a series now. People have said, Daman, good. Initiate, continue with that. The great debate will be its fortnightly activity. We'll keep picking up some issues or some topic or subject. I'll invite you all. Someday you could be speaking. Tell me if you are interested in speaking. And learning is forever and repeating. Even I keep learning every day. There's some learning for me, even from today's session. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Raman. Hope to have more such sessions. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.